Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. Today we're doing something different. Today we're actually playing a game. It's called Christian Culture. And it's got kind of like four different um, areas to the, to the game, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, so we're going to actually, it's not going to be a challenge. So we're actually going to play it together and we're going to try and figure out the answers. Yeah. But on episode 50, because this is episode 49, on episode 50, we're actually going to do a chili challenge. So it's going to be me and Abraham answering questions. Unfortunately, Emil can't do it because he's going to do a blood test, so he's going to fast. He's going to be average I, I should yeah. I should have used that as an excuse myself. Um, <laughs> no fast nah, nah, just checking. Maybe you received a revelation from Allah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what we're going to do, we're, we're actually going to have a lot of fun in the next episode as well. But this one, I think it's it's pretty fun as a, even as a family, if you play it. Yeah. Right. And it's not competitive. It's just, it's just a personal topic. Oh, we're doing a, yeah. we're, this is a paid promotion for Christian culture, guys. No, that's <laughs> not true. We're getting paid a thousand dollars. Yeah, we're not. Um, but we're actually going to just have a bit of fun with it. And um, we're actually going to just start playing it right let's do it yeah. let's, let's do, do it, it. All right. um so how do you how do we do this you just pick up the card is there are there answers or anything or it's just a question um, it's just a question just a question, just a question. So, all right you want to start with the first let's question for, yeah, uh, right, pull it up here so vote on the best answer if you were stranded on a desert island and could take one bible character with you who would you choose all right that's you know it's a softball question yeah softball you, you can't repeat anyone else's okay so you want to go first since you've asked the question? No, no, I asked the question, I'll go last. Okay. All right, okay. so let's go that way. Did, did they give us an option? Or no, what? no, there are options. You get to choose then one Bible vote, character. Which one had the best? And then we vote about who and had the best. How about character. this? Let's not choose Jesus because that's... Okay, no Jesus. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. is a softball question, so, you know, oh, it's man. opinionated. I would, I don't know I would choose I'll... Peter because he's a fisherman, so he'd probably... Be useful there. Ooh, that's a good answer. I'm he would actually, really he would really actually know how to survive on a desert island. Probably. Maybe. That's a very. And plus, good. if there's like some something trying to attack us, he'd probably <laughs> be the most useful. No, it's a desert island, which means Ooh. it's arid. It's hot. Oh, it's, it's a desert it's island. A desert. Or just an then island. Then John the Baptist. Stranded on a desert island. 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 Yeah, I was literally. I was about yeah. to say no. You just said Peter. You oh, can't go back, can't. man. That's not a problem. I mean, John the Baptist, his ministry, what, lasted six months in the desert? Yeah. I'll go with Moses, man. He did it for 40 <laughs> years. Bro, I was going to say, I'm going to do Moses. I'm, I'm going to go for Moses. Oh, Habibis. And, and, and you know what? He's going to hit the rock and we're going to get, uh, well, he needs to speak to the rock. And we're going to get water, everything, man. Manna. I'm I'm set. I don't know about you guys, but I'm set. All right, so you got John the Baptist. No, you got Moses. Yeah. John you got Peter. Yeah. Go now he went John the Baptist. Oh, did you change to yeah, John? Yeah. Oh, we said you're allowed to do it. He abrogated. <laughs> um, okay. I'll go Elijah. Ooh, may right. God sent ravens to that guy to feed him. So, mate, there are ravens, there are doves, whatever. There wouldn't be enough ravens. I don't know. I'm gonna... <laughs> are you going to compare a food that's in the mouth of a bird to... And like a wafer, those manners that come from heaven. Well, Habib, it, it's provision, man. It's provision. <laughs> All right, so you, you got to do it. How are we going to vote on the answers, though? Um, we'll just for this one we have to vote. So I'll, I'll, I'll go. I say Moses is the best one. Yeah, right? I think I actually agree. Yeah. Thank you. Guys. I Thank actually you. agree. Moses was the better. Answer. All right, I'm going to read that. How do you wait upon the Lord? Ooh. How do you wait? Is that is that a personal question yeah. or is that a biblical question? Like as though. There's a specific answer. Just asking you. Just yeah. Right, yeah. It, it's got the categories, basically stories. So that's the yellow one. Stories. Mm. How would you wait upon the Lord? We actually did a video about that. Mm. Waiting yes. upon the Lord. Yeah. You want to go first? Uh, sure. Um, I think just with patience and with uh, humility and just know that um, sometimes we just have to just be still and just know that he's there and he's, God. Mm. he's gonna be doing everything um nice. that's in our best interest what about you um it's funny it's interesting because waiting on the lord when i was single is actually a little different to at the moment now having like a family nuclear family here it's like 
when I was single, I'd wait on the Lord. I was under the submission of elders in, in the church and that kind of thing. So waiting on the Lord, it's kind of like, it's like, it's not a passive thing where you're just sitting and waiting. You're still moving in a certain direction for the will of God, but you're waiting on a specific answer and yeah. it gets revealed through people. Um, a lot of the time but with my, with my wife, I'll be like, look, I'm praying to God for this thing. I'd, I I want to ask that you pray for it as well. Yeah. And if we both have peace on this thing, it's kind of like he's going to reveal to both of us. Yeah. Especially if it's a bigger decision. No kind of thing. But that's, yeah. yeah. Actually very similar. Proactive yeah. waiting. Proactive that, waiting. That's, yeah. that's where yeah. I am. It's not passive. Yeah. yeah. So basically it's just be faithful with your day to day with what God has given you mm -hmm. and what God has entrusted you for me as a husband and as a father. So that's, that's what my life is yeah. and then when god reveals the next season and what has in store for us we'll take it and we'll yeah. move on yeah because sometimes it does take a while it's not sometimes we pray for something and we really want yeah true we really want god to straight away fix our yeah. problem or whatever it is and that, sometimes it takes a while yeah. that, that's why i got moses for my first answer i might be in the desert for a long so, time so we did a blue category which is icebreakers we did a yellow category which is stories so you want to try red yeah and you then go what's, a, the what's red a red one? red is hot topics hot, hot topics. topics is the church allowed to turn away anyone or make anyone feel unwelcome mm. That's a no, little that, that's a little I know one. it is. I'm yeah. gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna say let's not give short answers like yes. yes. <laughs> I'm just yes, and that's it. Go figure it yeah. out yourself. Um the preaching of the gospel always brings backlash. Always. Yeah. In regards to speaking of truth. So in my opinion, they don't turn away generally. People will probably make the first proactive decision in that. They'll be like Oh, you're speaking about my specific sin. I don't want that, any of that. Um, so generally people are the first ones to reject. But in regards to the church, are they allowed to turn away people who are, what was the question specifically, like seeking truth or, no, it doesn't say that. Are they allowed to turn anyone away? Just general, in general, can they turn away anyone? One of, one of the general roles of a pastor and the elders is to protect their sheep from wolves. Mm -hmm. And if there is due reason and if there is if there is warranted reason that the elders say this person here is a wolf, mm -hmm. they do have the right. And Paul speaks about that very specifically. So let's say there's somebody that's like building up on that. Cause mm -hmm. I agree with you there. If there's some, somebody like, for example, that is known, like, you know, that person has been saying some destructive heresies Yeah. yeah. and it's not just your church. Some other church leaders have told you like, Hey, just be careful. This guy has, you know, they've, we welcomed him in. And he's been saying these horrible, or she's been saying these horrible things. Um, just a warning. This is what it looks like. This is his name. And, you know, you, it's not just once. You hear it from multiple church leaders that you know very well. And um, or pastors from different churches you know very well. And you trust them. And, and it's not just one. It's multiple of them. And then you see that person. And you say, like, hey, just for the sake of my people that I'm pastoring, I can't let you in here. I don't yeah. see anything wrong with that. And look, and yes. just, and of course you do that. Unless, with, you, unless I would say, unless you see signs of repentance. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh, There's I was wrong. That was seven years ago. Yeah. But like, if it's like literally like a, mo a month later uh, after he was kicked out from another church and yeah. he's like, oh, they're liars. They're this and like, no, sorry, I can't. You know? yeah. We've had situations like that where you'd be like, all right, well, you're saying they're a liar. They're saying you're a liar. Let's bring you both together and, and get let's, to the have, bottom. let's yeah. get to the bottom because we need to figure out with wisdom and discernment who's coming up with the story and, and who's telling the lies. And of course, I would do all this with patience and love. It's not something yeah. like I would be like, oh, get out of here. I don't like you or you're this, you're that. I wouldn't be like kind of demoralizing them or, or like insulting yeah, them. I would just sure. be like, hey, I'm very sorry, but I, I can't let you in here. Yeah. And this is the reason why. Yeah. yeah. What do you well, think, Martin? No, it's it's... Very important. I mean, before Acts 2, Jesus has already prepared Peter, Peter to feed and protect the sheep. Mm. So that's that's a big responsibility <clears throat> on the elders and the pastors yeah. of the church to make sure that they care for their sheep. But at the same time, excommunication is actually an authority that God has given to the yeah, church. That's right. So We spoke about this yeah. um, 
a while back on church one of discipline? the podcasts, church discipline. There you go. Excommunication is warranted, but with a lot of wisdom. Yes. Yes. Oh, go for it, man. Martin? Have you? Um, he was the first I had one. one. Yes. You did one. You did. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Go for it. So That's the like green, green, right, green category is interpretation. Ooh. All right. What is wisdom and how do you gain it? Mate, you're going to need to go to Proverbs for this one. What is wisdom and how to use it? Do you want to answer it? first? Um, how do you gain it? Well, James 1 says, if you ask, God will give it to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, wisdom is the fear of the Lord, the beginning, the beginning of wisdom. Of wisdom. Couple of so, I, so, <laughs> I mean, but, yeah. but the difference is, is wisdom is how do you apply God's revelation in your life? Yeah. yeah. That's very important because a lot of people today, especially today, like we have the Bible, every household, every Christian household will have the Bible. Every Christian, most likely they will have a Bible app in their, in their phone. Yeah. But to apply what you're learning from the word into your life i think that's the challenge that a lot of christians face yeah so if you seek the wisdom from god god will start to reveal how you start to apply his will in your life that's yeah that's, i agree yeah. um well i was gonna say the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the lord but um, yeah amen but it is um, Good answer. and that's that's how it starts that's how you, you start with um having this you know respect and reverence to god mm-hmm. and 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 it is fear as well like like actual fear and um because he can destroy you he can destroy you completely not just your physical body but you just gone so of, of course i'll fear this person yeah. mm-hmm. like matthew 10 it yeah. says don't be afraid of the one that kills the flesh but the one who can destroy both flesh and exactly soul. Uh, it, it is yeah. it is genuinely scary but like it's not that's where it starts and that's wisdom like this it's wise to fear somebody that can do that, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's common sense. But f- from that, you start to get to know who God is. And you, your wisdom builds because now you're understanding who he is as a person. And, and you realize that I no longer, that fear is still there, of course, because that, that's still a, a reality that he could do something. But I know that he won't do it because he is my father. Mm-hmm. And I'm his son. And, and, and by having this relationship with him, father-son relationship, and building on that, I, I, I learn from him and I learn from, and, and from, from, you know, the things that, that are written in the Bible, you know, that's him speaking to me yeah. and telling me how to build on my wisdom. And, and I, of course, when I lack in wisdom, I always ask my father and he always gives it to me because cool. he is my father. What about you? Ed? Yeah. And just building on, on, on that as well, in regards to, um, asking and receiving as well in regards to the spirit li- living in our lives. Cause like, look at the man who wrote that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It was Solomon who had like zero wisdom in his life, pretty much like in a lot of what he did, there was no wisdom, but there was knowledge. Yeah. And he's speaking on the topic of wisdom saying, this is how you gain it, but he doesn't live it out. Whereas for us as believers, we have the spirit of God dwelling in us who brings to remembrance and to, who brings to the forefront, the revelation of Christ in our daily actions, because it's, it's not just, um, prescriptive, it's descriptive. And it's also in regards to daily actions and micro decisions. It's the spirit of God who is supposed to be leading us. So that's where wisdom comes. So if you ask, you're going to receive it. So. Amen. Yeah. Um, I like what you just said, a side note, is connecting it to Solomon. Mm. What James did is he started with chapter one, mm. seek wisdom, but then the rest was obedience. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So just living out that wisdom. And that is why it's being obedient to God. Have you ever been upset with God? How did you approach it? Yes, I have. This is some Job stuff. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <about. Yeah>, that's <laughs> where I was going with this. Yeah. It, the the funny thing for me is like God, I'm upset with you, but I know I'm in the wrong. Yes, because I should never be upset with you. You're perfect. I'm not. There is something that I'm missing, right? There's a blind spot, and that's and, making you upset. Yeah, that's what's making me upset. Yeah. Is that I don't understand what you're trying to do. I'm upset, but I need to learn how to trust <clears throat> again. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's my personal opinion. I'm, I'm trying. I'm really <laughs> trying to think. I don't. Holy Spirit, search my heart, but I really don't think I've ever been angry at God. I've been upset at certain situations that I know were not from God, that were a result of my own actions. 
uh, being angry at God, I don't think so. That's nice. Right. Um, that just makes me holier than Martin. But yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, I do envy that, to be honest with you. I'm not going to lie. Um, I have had situations where I've, I have been angry at God. And it wasn't mainly because like he did something. It was just the silence that I was feeling at the time. Mm-hmm. It was like, God, I'm going through this horrible thing. And it's not just me. It's affecting the people I care about. Where are you? And why, why are you, first of all, why are you allowing this? And you, we're supposed to be your children. And yet, I, I know the rain, you know, comes down on the evil and the just alike, but it doesn't feel that way. It feels like I'm in a drought and the evil people are getting all the rain. Cool. So why? And, and that, that question, the why, and me not understanding, like you said, is what made me angry. And then I remember Job and, and, and God put it in my heart and it, how was, God was speaking to him. It was like, were you there when I, when I, when I created the world? When you, were, were you there? Did you, do you know my ways? Mm. Do you can you even fathom them? Yeah. No, then why are you asking me? Why are you acting like you know more than me? Just, it's, and that humbled me, but it was still painful. Yeah, I still, it, I, it was still, and it still is up on my flesh, but uh, yeah. But I, I'm working on it. There's a, there's a, there's a bonus card here. Yeah, we will, we will do this. Are we going to do this one yeah. as well? Yeah, that, that sounds interesting. Should we do that now? You want to do it? We'll see who gets the most this one, this one, This one might be a more, because these ones are pretty easy. Try that one there. No, we'll see who gets the most yeah? points. Okay. Yeah, right, right, let's, 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 let's see. see. Let's do it. Um, we can skip this. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say something nice about the person to your right. And I'm to his right. <laughs> it's just a joke. All right. Yeah, for a okay. Are we, all right, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Um, attended three services in one day. Have yes. you ever? Yes. yes. No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. So that's one point for each of us. Yeah. Right. And I'm still on. Attended a church convention. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So two. two. Uh, cried in church. Yes. yes. Cried in church. Yes. Three. Three. Preached the gospel. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm only down one point so far. Right. Received communion. Yes. Yeah. Worked or volunteered in the church? Yes. 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 Fell asleep during a sermon? No. No. I've never fallen asleep no. during a sermon. Spoke you in tongues. You have to think about it. I do, because there have been some boring sermons. I've come no. close. I've come close. I've come close. Everyone was like, mm. uh, Spoken in tongues? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Been baptized? Yes. 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 Sung in the choir? Yes. 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 Pretended to put money in the offering? Yes. Uh, no, I've never done that. <laughs> yeah, you get a point for it. Oh, <laughs> you get a point. We even. Where are you? Uh, I live been, in the honest, guys. That is yeah, a... Been given a prophecy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I guess we're all even. We're all even. <laughs> we're all even. Wow. Uh, Dude, Emil, that saved you, man. That saved me. Yeah, Thank God you did that one sin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, is it my turn? No, yeah. It's all right. Right. I think we've already done the yellow one. Do you no. want to do a red one? Red, yep. Yeah. All right, so hot topic. Ooh. Why aren't Christians exempt from pain and suffering? If anything, it's like we're the targets of it, but hey. Yeah. <laughs> Why are we not exempt from pain and suffering? I mean, it is by definition. Like, spiritually, we have a, an enemy that seeks to kill, destroy, and steal. So, yeah, we will go through suffering. Yeah, we use targets. And it has many benefits to it, right? One is that we actually have fellowship with Christ in it because Mm -hmm. we share in his suffering. Two, Romans 5 speaks about suffering leads to our spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting thing because we look at um, the agency of the devil. So I look at the agency of the devil. God has allowed the devil this period of time where he is able to, you know, do all his works and, and expand the kingdom of darkness and target his saints. But he's an agent for the growth in faith, right? Mm-hmm. In that we know that these trials bring about a a molded character and a conformity to the image of Christ for the yeah. believer. And so it's almost like, all right, yes, God is allowing Satan to do it. Satan doesn't realize the end result of it in that the saints are actually being molded in faith and actually becoming stronger um, in their faith in God. 
but the end result is the the conformity to that image and there was one specific example that, uh, of a lady in brazil that we met um she had two kids her husband died at the birth of one of the the sons her, her husband died straight after it. that child ended up having like a really rare genetic condition yeah. and is pretty much you know he doesn't he is blind he can't read can't write can't walk can't do anything pretty much he's in a he's in a wheelchair she ends up with cancer right and like it's just like everything is going wrong and that woman has more faith than any other person that i know it's like a devil attack bingo yeah 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 like for real and everything was just going wrong for this woman Sheesh. and she became this testimony a uh, testimony of the faith and the grace and the mercy of god in like wow. complete suffering so it was like a job experience on earth and i look at that and i'm like look at her faith she did not give up she did not allow that to to question god to the point where she says i don't no longer believe in you you failed me yeah it's like you when know? when job's wife was um telling him like curse god, curse god and yeah. just be done with it like yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. wow that's that's um that, it's horrible to hear what happened to her but it's amazing to hear that yeah. She has so much. She's she's a testimony to the grace wow. of God. So, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, list three names of God. You can't repeat someone else's answers. Ooh. That's so okay. Oh, this is a lot. Oh, no, can I start? No, okay. go for it. You can go. El Shaddai. Um, you don't have to go Hebrew on us. All right. So, <laughs> El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty, yeah. Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides, and Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Um, uh, you want me to go? No, you go. I asked you. I should have to go last. Oh, man, that's fine. I am. Okay. I am who I am. Um, which he, is Yahweh, so you can't say Yahweh, bro. <laughs> uh, what else we can use? Beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. uh, but would that be a title? Well, we just it is it. a title. Yeah, it is. It, Jesus, Jesus takes so Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. It is and a Father. Father. Yeah. Okay. okay. Holy Spirit. <laughs> I mean, once I said Father, I'm like, he's going to list the rest of the Trinity. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was like, why does no one say Jesus? Yeah, sure. All right. Yeah, sure. And Holy Spirit and uh, I don't know. I don't know. You already said I don't know. No, I didn't. You didn't? No, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Lord. All right. Is, is it my turn? Uh, I think it's your turn. It's my turn. Yeah. Which one should we go? The green one. ones? Let's go green ones. Green. What are your thoughts on fasting? Ooh. You're doing do it, it right now. Do it now. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> I'm not doing it for spiritual reasons. Like you uh, can do it. I wish I was. That would be amazing. Greatest for me, I'll, I'll just do a personal one. Greatest spiritual experiences of my life <clears throat> were during my fasting yeah. periods. Like for real. Same. It just took it to it. My the the physical side of things not the best no right but spiritually speaking there's never been a moment where i was as close yeah. in experience to god with the spirit it was just that amazing fellowship so yeah do it now do it 100 um i'd say for me um it was the physical was okay for me because i only did like i've only ever done like three days max okay. I, and that's what i was doing for um every now and then i'll do three days fasting liquids only and um for me physically i felt fine it was more psychologically it was a bit difficult but spiritually and physically i felt amazing i felt um like i, I had no worries about tomorrow i had I, I didn't even need to think about tomorrow all i was concentrating on was being in the presence of god now mm -hmm. and that's, that's all that would matter yeah and honestly it was amazing. It's just obviously sometimes, especially the second day, it was really difficult um, <laughs> when it comes to food, especially when you smell food and you're like, oh, I really want it. But but yeah. then you remember the pros outweigh the cons. Big yeah, moment. true. I, I agree with everything you guys said. And man, like I thought I experienced God until you fast. Yeah. And it's yeah, yeah, something yeah. else. Something else. Yeah. Totally different. Yeah. Mountain yeah. top experience. Oh, I thought Let's you were going to say I agree with everything else. And just <laughs> 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 yeah, everything you guys said. Is it your turn, Emil? Uh, I believe it's your turn, right? And then mine. We've did a green one. We did green. Let's go yellow. Yeah. Let's All go right, yellow. yellow. And I'll show some red so if you want to choose red. This is just stories. 
What was your lo- oh, similar? But what was your longest wilderness experience or season, and how long did it last? Oh. So wilderness season is a season where you kind of feel like you're in the thick of either suffering or the silence of God, or I would say two to three years. Yeah, yeah, two to three years. Um, I would say I'm in it right now. I'm not joking. Like I think yeah, yeah the last probably two or three years still. That's that's still it. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> For me, it was you're giving dark. too much information. <laughs> you're giving too much information, man. For me, it's been about roughly five years. Yeah. Um, it's not a competition. It's just. <laughs> right, he's trying. He's just trying to. Like it's like three years on one more. Um, no. Uh, yeah, it's been about five years, maybe yeah. six. Um, for close to six, and it's not so much about me as it is about somebody I care about. And it's a lot more difficult when it's someone else. When it's you, you can, you know, put up with it. You can just deal with it. But when it's somebody that you care about, oh, it's tough. Because you you can't do anything for their suffering. And all you can rely on is God. And yet it feels like yeah. silence. Cool. Cool. Well, j- just to clarify, would you say wilderness experiences have anything to do with your own spiritual frailties or weaknesses? Because Sometimes. some people might think about, or why you're going through a wilderness period, it might be that you're in sin, no. or that you're, you know, you've, it's you... It's got nothing to do with my sin, it's it's somebody that I care about that is yeah. in sin. I just wanted to clarify, because some people, yeah. especially in our background, certain very hyper-charismatic backgrounds, they'll say, you're going through this because of some sin in your life. No. And yeah. you have to be very careful with that, because wilderness experiences and seasons are... At times, it's an agency of... of Why would God, God punish somebody it, else for something I did? That doesn't... Yeah. Well, I mean, like, let's say your own personal experiences. Yeah. And that. I would say sometimes that can, it can be. have a role, yeah. but sometimes it doesn't have to doesn't, be, it, right? It could be, but for me, it's not. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with what I have done. It, it's those moments where it, you just... It is, it, is, it is happening because of that person's sin, mm. but not me. Because okay. it's happening to that person, not me. So I guess to answer your question, it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Is it my turn? Emil. Emil. Yeah, right. uh, okay. I think right. we'll actually do that as a last question. Last one. The okay. Last question. Right. Yes. Do you have to dress a certain way for church, and that can be for women or men? Tuxedo. No. <laughs> no cross dressing. I think that's a. You yeah. Know, Definitely. Men maybe should in today's re- class. <laughs> men should dress like men. Women should dress like um, women. Modesty is important. Yes. But to say like you need a suit or a certain, I don't I know. I wouldn't say that. Like men, for example, have to come in dressed properly. Yeah. Like you know, obviously you don't want to um, come in your pajamas. In my personal opinion, if you guys could feel differently, I think women should also cover their hair. Really, I think yeah. Oh, no. it's me, it's me Whoa, personally. That's me personally. That's me personally. He's going full uh, Arab on us this man. No, it's, <laughs> it's just from what I've read. Uh, okay, know, but it, nice. I could, I could, uh, yeah. I could, this is my my opinion. I could be wrong. Uh, I think that one can be a, a for me a personal thing if women feel comfortable. Yeah, but yeah. um, no, I don't agree that it should be uh, a must or. I think it's it's something that's good to do. In my opinion, uh, okay, yeah, so it's mine. Uh, for me, it's just being modest, um, dress according to your gender, <laughs> and come with something that's a bit presentable, like yeah. not your PJs, right? Yeah, yeah, just something that's a bit presentable, um, right? There, yeah, there's, there's, I think, I think there, there's the extremes of both, yeah, um, like coming in you know you're not going to come in your speedos and stuff like that but i've seen like i've seen like provocative clothing in church and yeah, I'm like, yeah 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 that's come cool. on like it's instead of going like we went from one extreme to another and it's yeah there, there's also another another I've side, had other extreme at least it's more there's extreme. also another side of it that is counter productive and counterintuitive it's like um like i've been to third world countries and yeah. whatnot and we did a lot of mission work and it's kind of like there there's a cultural mandate that when you go to church you have to wear yeah. your finest suits yeah, like and so they're going into yeah. debt and they're not feeding their kids yeah. and their families because they have to get a suit and the nicest clothes and they don't want to wear the same clothing every day and every then week. it's like that becomes a cultural thing yeah. a cultural stronghold and you're like guys the heart of the law is mercy man like this is not the heart of christ 
yeah. people that went out to see him, they were concerned mainly with the content of his message, not with the outward appearance. And yeah. So, yeah, you have to... I think that also would discourage someone to come it to does, church. Because yeah, if well, someone is poor, yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be very difficult to be like, yeah. well, I need a suit to enter this that church. Was, well, that's where it becomes counter productive counterintuitive because you're like you want to bring the masses to hear the word of god but they're like well i don't have the finest clothes and you know i i don't have the money to go spend on clothes and i've already wore this same thing 10 times and people are going to notice and so like it becomes all about the clothes and it's not, not about dressing like in fine clothing it's about dressing modestly yeah that's all it is it's dressed modestly and uh in a way that reflects christ yeah, and yeah. in the opinion of Mill, cover your head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> only in church. Only okay. in church. So, yeah. um, we're actually going to be doing an episode special every ten episodes. Okay. 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 Moving so forward, doing the same thing, or we're, we might just play this game, or we might play something else, something, a yeah, question yeah. game. We're obviously we're not going to do the same questions. Okay. So how we're many, not how repeating many, How many anything. questions did we do? We did we're, we've we're done a few. Three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, ten. 11, yeah. 11. So, yeah, there you go. so if you actually like this and you want more of it let us know yeah um but for the next episode hey we get we're gonna hot in here yeah it's gonna oh it's gonna be difficult because we gotta actually dunk it really well in the chili. and the thing is it's and a it's, chili game guys and it's deep tracks of the bible like as in who's the great great grandson of this genealogy so we're all getting <laughs> heated up in here I need to get a lot of milk and water. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this and we'll see you next time. Take care.